When I was taking over the project, it was this thick, 20-30 pages I think, not mistaken, the list must be 20, so thick. So now, the argument was, you know what, they wanted to convert this to e-form, so the agent can key in directly and submit the form. Actually, form cannot be filled up by customer. Customer just give the information, you ask and the agent is supposed to use the system to key in. So, they were having some issues, argue, argument, in determining what is the layout, you know, what to be used, how the form need to be, here let's say checkbox, huh? they were arguing on how to convert this checkbox, not possible. So only on the UI, you know, UI part, they spent a few weeks to argue. Oh my goodness. We were sitting there, but like myself, I'm a developer. I do nothing. Just sit, let them settle, then only can come to me, requirement, I can start working. So we go there, he brought us to understand the project clearly. So we go there, always argue, argue, whole day gone, come back. Go lunch and then come back, continue argument. So argue, argue, at the end, no, no uh, what do you call that, uh, no, no compromise between both parties. My, uh, my, my uh, what do you call that, project manager talk from the view, uh, the point of development. It is possible to develop or not. And these people keep, you know, asking exactly how the original form look like now. They want exactly like that for the system. Why? Because they want to take care of their agent. They don't want their agent to suffer. They want their agent to have a very, uh, what do you call the easy way to submit the form. So it was like very, very complicated process. I remember I went there for three weeks just to settle this thing. Wow, oh, that was very hard time. Do nothing, just sit and listen to people arguing. You know? Ah, so that's the example. So if in your life, right, you have argument, what do you do? Bye-bye. Wow, well, quit the relationship. Wow, solve the problem. No see you in my life again. Wow, actually best, the best way to When I used to argue with my husband, I always do that. I just sit quiet, don't talk anything. Ah, settle. <laughs> he cannot, you know, because we used to drive from here to Sermban. The place of Milan, his home was there. You know, I was pregnant somehow. So keep nagging, I will just quiet, I won't reply anything. He will stop. Very, uh, very peaceful. For one hour, or two, not one hour, two hours journey will be very peaceful. You know, no point arguing, right? Just quiet. It's good for you, good for everyone. Okay, that's relationship. Now here, back to here. Okay, this one client, you keep quiet, they change the vendor. Then your boss will find you. you. Can you be quiet and show your face to him? Cannot. You have to please him. You have to please the client. Otherwise, you don't bring the project or you make the project go off from you, die. Well, you know what? I have seen in my real life, one project failed. You know the failure? Totally not because of the higher management. It's due to the staff. Some very lazy staff were there in the team. I still remember the project. Pity, you know what happened at the end? All these people still survived in the office. The project manager stepped down. He was stepped down, he was forced to step down and he couldn't take the embarrassment, he resigned in few weeks. But you know, shouldn't blame him, shouldn't blame him. I know who were uh, the people who actually caused the project to fail, all the developers, you know, all the technical people. But at the end, you know, blame goes to whom? Project manager. Because it's project manager's responsibility to make the project work, move according to the schedule. You have to force them to work. You have to make sure and sure they work. So at the end, he stepped down. He was forced to step down. Like kind of, you know, they, they, uh, 
what do you call that like you know fire him from the project manager position then after some time he resigned ha ah, resigned he resigned himself he couldn't take the you know the the pressure so he just resigned so all this can happen you know not easy to be project manager but the salary i tell you so nice so interesting figure ha ah, very interesting figure of course ha ah, you can reach five digit in a very short period of time if you make a lot of project success you get a uh, uh, what do you call that uh, promotion very easily very easily i have one project manager at home okay but the pressure is not easy ah like in 3 4 time in 3 4 years you lose your hair ah you will get older <laughs> you you take picture before you become project manager and after become project manager you can see big difference ah that's the thing okay so let's see most of the project manager were ah gone through a lot of pressure okay especially when come to the projects ah new release or whatever go oh, tell you okay to understand concept of inconsistency management to explain the activity involved differentiate qualitative and quantitative for your information right qualitative quantitative quantitative qualitative for you i just notice not as a mistake this is called quantitative quantity okay quantitative quantitative correct okay the other one is qualitative okay Okay, then evaluating alternative options to understand. I can tell you this uh, chapter full of calculations. I told you right, calculation got one question in final exam. Yeah, I got it one question calculation. Yes, got one. One for one. Either, either under the risk. Wow, got a lot of formula, lot of calculations are uh, under the risk. The other one is quantitative, quantitative. Yeah, this quantitative. This one, evaluating alternative options. Just put together. Okay, so you have evaluating alternative options, some formulas, and then the other one is risk. Either one will come up in the final exam. Confirm. Okay. Okay. Now proceed. Okay. Where are we now? Where are we now, class? We already done the elicitation completely. Now evaluation technique. Okay, so we are in the second phase, uh, evaluation techniques. Okay, so requirement evaluation, negotiation based on decision making. You identify and resolve the inconsistency. Identify, assess and resolve the risk. Compare all the possible options you have. What I mean by possible option? Okay, now listen, ah, uh, class. You are developing a system, e-commerce system for a customer. How do you decide what payment mode you want? Do you straight away say, okay, we go for credit card or debit card payment, or we go for uh, online banking, online transfer, or directly? Oh, nowadays, oh, e-wallet is very popular, so e-wallet. Can we just decide by ourselves? No. We as developer, we have to identify all the options, alternative options. You have to evaluate which one is the best technique. Then only can propose to your client. Okay, you go for this payment mode, ah, because clients say only one payment mode can't afford all. So you have to simply, you cannot simply choose. You have to identify all the payment modes, alternative payment modes. Evaluate. There are few techniques to evaluate. After evaluating, you choose the best. Okay, and you propose to them, and they agree. You start with the design and development. Cannot simply do, ah, in development. Okay. Then finally, you have your prioritization. Okay. Okay. Now the first part. Okay. Now you see what is interview, what is interview, interview, interview. Always student, you know, uh, misunderstood this too. They always think the other way round. Okay. They always think intra means within different group. Inter means same group. It sounds like that, but no. Intra means within the same group. Ah, huh? intra means within the same group. Inter means within the different groups. Okay, okay. Interview points each stakeholder has its own focus and concern. So meaning, you know what? This stakeholder. Let's say we have these two stakeholder. I have to collect requirement from both of them. Let's say library system. This stakeholder says. Okay, the student can borrow and keep the book for 
three weeks. And this stakeholder say the student can borrow and keep the book longer if they want. Clashing or not? Do you think clashing? This guy say three weeks. Ah, uh, meaning I understand what must return after three weeks. No way to keep. But this guy say can keep as long as they want. So says like you know sounds like there is a chance for me to renew. Correct or not? Ha, huh. clashing. You know that is interview or interview. Two different stakeholder. Interview or interview. Two different stakeholder. Inter or intra. Inter. Very good. Inter means two different. Inter sounds like one, but no. Inter means two different. In English, intra means same group. Inter means two different group. Okay. Inter means two different group. Clear? Okay. Now intra. Just now this guy. Now only one group. We don't look at the others. He says, "I want authorization, ah, huh? my system authorization and authentication, three tier. You know what is three tier? Three verification or validation. Now this three tier very common, right? Bank. How you log in, log out now? Bank system. Now not just uh, login username and password. Login username password is one tier. Second now got image verification, right? Second tier. Third tier sometimes you can." the pin number or something then ah uh, only can go in so three tier three checking three validation so he says i want three tier ah uh, confirm i want the security to be very good and somewhere else he mentioned the performance of the system must be very high because we don't want our client to wait long don't you think this is also clashing his own his one requirement his own requirement same stakeholder but the way he has written the requirement or given the requirement you know contradicting with each other he say performance must be very good and he want the security to be good as well cannot cannot you increase the security how to make sure the performance is good it will take some time it will cause some time consuming ah i mean consumption so what happen will drop the performance ah that is intra intra you understand or not okay So intra means your own requirement clashing each other. Inter means two different party requirement clashing each other. So very common is inter. Very common. Okay. So now let's look at the example. Okay. Before that, what are the three types of clash? Well, this one I got asked in the past. Uh, past. Uh, what do you call that? Past year. Just last semester. Your senior class here, so I don't think I'll ask again. Okay, the three types of clash. The first type, terminology clash. Who can give me an example of terminology clash? Ah, just now got someone say, on loan. Someone ah, uh, here you use borrow. When you have two terminologies, are they the same meaning, or got difference between on loan and borrow? So when you have two different terms. Clash each other. Ah, then that's actually terminology clash. Okay, you see, ah, same concept but named differently. One place you use on loan, one place you use borrow. Then we don't know which one is which one. Like sometimes, uh, what do you call that? Your stakeholder. You get requirement from stakeholder when you read. When you see two different terms, you will assume two different functions. Correct, Ahmad. Otherwise, why use two different terms? So that is actually clash. Two different term for the same concept. Actually, what he uh, he would like to say is borrow, but then he use one on loan, the other one borrow. But actually, both of them are the same. So that is terminology clash. Clear? Okay. Now, just now two terms, one concept. Now one term, one term, two concept. Example, same name for different concept. Let's say. At one place, you say borrower. Okay, borrower. At the other place, you say how can I say? Yeah, give me example. What else? Ah, I can. I need to have ah borrower, borrower. Okay, let me borrower. But then you say one place, this borrower allowed to keep the book. Ah, uh, what three weeks? Uh, no, five weeks. Another place, you say this borrower can keep the book only for three weeks. Cannot. 
what do you mean is one is students three weeks the other one is staff five weeks but you when and use the same term to describe both different category of people so that is actually destination in flash so lecturers of course ah oh, some university you know what when i go before apu i can keep as long as i want i i uh, just need to renew in six months once i think my previous university i had online account i just can click my renew button as many times as you i want close to uh, what expiry due i just click renew i can renew as long as i want uh, so is it different system here i'm not sure because i've never been to the library very far very very far so i prefer online book rather than walking to the library okay so i've never borrowed any book okay so that's the uh, example of destination clash and the last one structure clash you know structure is the way you put in information the structure so example uh, and one please you like friday 5 pm Like now, assignment due. The system says assignment due. Okay. The lecturer say okay must submit the assignment by 5 p.m. today. But the system shows Friday only. So Friday means until 11:59. Now what is 11:59? The whole day until 24 hours over. So structure clash. So you mean only Friday 5 p.m. or when you say Friday, does it mean until 11:59? You understand or not? Is it eleven fifty nine or is it five? Clear? Ah, uh, so that's the thing. Okay, next. Okay, now what two types of conflict? Very strong conflict, very weak conflict. Can you anyone give me an example of strong conflict? Example of strong conflict? Okay, I'll give you an example. If student attend the class. If student attend any class, tutorial, practical lecture, okay, 30 minutes later, 30 minutes later, okay, or 30 minutes after the class starts, no attendance given, no attendance given. One requirement says, if student attends 30 minutes after the class starts, no attendance given. Another one says, if student attend the class late, attendance still will be marked. One say no attendance. One say attendance marked. Clashing or not? You cannot come up with a requirement which satisfies both. Can or not? You say, ah, you see. One say this. One say this. Any overlapping? No overlapping, ah, huh? no overlapping. So do you think you can solve this? Very difficult to solve. I'll teach you how to solve in strong conflict. So strong conflict. You know, big conflict means one say like this, the other one say maybe like this, little. So still got some overlapping. So either you can support either one forever. So not like not very, not no very big difference. This one totally opposite, totally opposite. Say yes, say say no. So this one strong conflict. Okay, if uh, like this, big conflict, big conflict. They very strictly said no one ah uh, can see the information of the participant. Then the other one say the meeting initiator should know the participant constraint. One say cannot. The other one say someone can see. Totally opposite right. Clashing fully right. Strong. Okay, strong. You have to choose either one. You cannot like you know fulfill both. Is there any way I can satisfy both? Is there any way I can satisfy both? One say cannot. Ah, uh, no one can see the participant information. One say the meeting initiator can see the party. Ah, uh, the participant information. So totally opposite. Can I come up with a requirement fulfill both? Strong. You know what is big? You see the two examples I give it here. Patron shall return the borrowed copies within next week. Patron shall return the borrowed copies within next week. Another one say patron needing a book copy more than next week, so shall keep borrowed copies as long as they want. So one say must return within next week. One say can keep as long as they want. So you can actually this is not very strong. You know why? This is considered big. You know why? 
maybe you can keep at sweet and then you can renew one you can renew or you can ask permission you can do something to continue for example so this is possible to have make both at it you can satisfy both with conflict okay now what are the five tactics very important for assignment ah huh? five tactics okay five ah huh? before we go and go and look at the five tactics okay let me show you the four steps the first step saying that identify the overlapping statement so you have to see which line overlapping so this is one requirement this is another requirement you have to find the overlapping part which part is overlapping okay you have to fix it number 2 detect the conflict among them after you find the overlapping see what is conflicting what is the conflict number 3 generate the conflict resolution now this is what i'm going to do she teach you today very important and last one evaluate which option is the best <clears throat> when you is up when you generate the conflict resolution right you can come up with more than one answer you can come up with more than one resolution so you have to choose the best resolution to implement okay okay let's look at the tactics okay let's look at the tactics huh? okay these are the five tactics okay these are the five tactics can you tell me what are the five tactics avoid boundary condition restore weaken the conflicting uh, statement drop the a uh, low priority statement and specialize okay now i give you the requirement to compare i give you the requirement to compare okay i give you the requirement to compare okay where i put up the all the very sticky I restore the sentence. I restore the sentence for the second one. I don't write like this. 
this. But I restore like this. So the meaning is the same. At the same time, no conflict. Agree with me? So that is restoring. Third one. Weaken the conflict. Okay? Weaken the conflict. You know the conflict is here, right? You know the conflict is here. You try to reduce the conflict. You try to reduce. Okay? Try to reduce the conflict. How to reduce the conflict now? Copy written within x unless explicit permission. So you must return, huh? you must return the book. If you want to keep can, but you must have permission. So that is actually, you know what? Still got conflict, still got conflict. But reduce the conflict. Reduce the conflict because the first one says must return. X-ray, yes fine. The second one says you can keep. So we are supporting both, but still the conflict exists. But we say must get the permission. So it's weakening the conflict. This is just an example of solution, an example. You can have other better solutions as well. No problem. Okay? Okay, number four. Ah, strong conflict, huh? Plus. Strong conflict like this. Do what? Can you support? Can you come up with resolution to happy to satisfy both? No. So what do you do? Drop no. one. That's the best outcome. Don't think so much, huh? Very strong conflict. Cannot do anything. Must go and negotiate with the stakeholder to drop one. You have to drop one. No choice. Okay? So, lower priority statement drop. Okay, now tell me, this two, which one will you drop? I want to listen from everyone. You will drop which one? Second one. You will go for the second one. What about the last two students? Which one will you drop? Because you want to solve by dropping, dropping one of the requirements, so no clash. So, which one will you drop? Second one. Why? Reason? Why you want to drop the second one? Then later the stakeholder won't be happy with you. Sorry? Borrow again. What's wrong with borrow again? Ah, but it's not written there. What? When you drop. It's now like you know three weeks only, that's the meaning. So it didn't explain whether can borrow again or cannot be borrow continuously again. No explanation given. So when you say you want to draw, what you have to do, you know, you have to find out which one is lower priority. So which one is lower priority? Who can tell me? Staff. Which one? Hey, okay, come to staff and patron. Which one is lower priority? Patron is borrower. Who knows better about library? Staff. So staff is always higher priority because this is something to do with the rules, right? Rules, who know better? Staff know better. We cannot ask the students. Students always tell, I want to keep for so many days. Correct or not? So you have to go for higher priority. I will go for this is higher priority because position, staff. Okay? Student is considered low position when come to hierarchy of library. So, higher priority because higher position. Can you understand? So, which one you drop? The second one. Drop last one. Yes. Okay, next. Specialize the conflict source or target. Okay, which one is source, which one is target? Requirement comes from who? Class? Class. Requirement comes from who? Source is come from who? This one come from who?
So we specialize the source. So we say this requirement only comes from library. So which requirement is selected? Again, start. This one straight away, no more. Understand? So specialize the source or target means you identify who can be the target or who can be the source. So the other one can be ignored. Ignored. Okay, when you specialize the source, you say this requirement must come from librarian only. If you specialize the uh, target, for example, you can say, okay, that's the answer for source. If you want to target, specialize the target also can. How? Who can target? How to specialize the target? Who can target? Okay, I can say, students shall return the book within X weeks. Staff shall keep borrowed book copies as long as they want. I specialize the target. Also can. I can get two different solutions. Solve the problem. You understand or not? So when you specialize, the requirements are not clashing. You are using patron, patron, got problem. When you use different terms, make it clear, no clash. Understand? Okay, class, now listen. Assignment, uh, assignment, you have to, every student, uh, every student, you have your own module, right? Of course, I'm not asking you to do now. I'm just explaining related to what I teach today. So, you can try to think first now uh, when you have time. You have your own module, right? In your own module, can you identify one set of requirement, one set of school requirement, clashing each other? Of course, you create yourself. Okay? You try to come up with some requirement example which clash each other. Your own module. Every student, you have your own module, right? So, you have to identify two requirements, huh? one set of requirement which clash each other. After you get the two requirements which clash each other, you have to perform all the five tactics to solve it. I want to see all the five examples of solution. Then, what do you have to do? Of course, I want try your best to come up with five. Some student told me, Miss, mine is very strong, very strong clashing, conflict. I cannot do restore or weaken, cannot. Ah, then okay, then only. If not very strong, can actually give me five solution, five resolution. Okay. After giving me the five resolution, last one, I want you to evaluate all the five resolution and choose one. Of course, you cannot do all five. You only implement one. So you tell me which one going to be your solution. You resolve using one tactic, only one. So you can justify, you know what is justify? Give reason for each resolution, which one is good, which one is not really good for your project. Then finally you choose one, finally choose one. First come up with five resolution or okay, then choose one. If really very strong conflict, you cannot give me five resolution, maybe three, okay. Okay, but if I can find out uh, five resolution, then I minus your marks. So you have to really check if you cannot, Give me all the five resolution or not. If possible, then better do. Okay? Then choose one. Evaluate and choose one. Discuss and justify why. I want the justification, huh? no marks. Okay? So every module, one conflict. Every module, find two requirements which are conflicting with each other. Clear? Do you understand what I mean, right? Okay. So that's the work given. Okay. I covered my syllabus for today, I think. Any question?
Thank you. 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 Thank you.